interact with the applications, the way we consume technology and so on and so forth. Right? So that's one uh, perspective. I see it changing uh, big time in the recent, uh, uh, in the recent past few years. Right? That's one. Uh, second thing, and I think we all acknowledge saying that while the hybrid workforce as a concept was there, but pandemic taught us very differently. Right? It forced some of us to work for nearly more than a year uh, away from workplaces. Some some jobs could not, and they continue to work in an offline mode. But it forced some of us to kind of work in a hybrid mode to a scenario today where we say we are never going to go to be back into the normal world, the old normal. So the new normal has taken over the old normal. Right? That's the concept that is going on now. Now, what does that mean? Saying the setup of hybrid, which means some teams, some individuals might continue to work in an offline mode, some in an online mode, some will come in at some point of the day of the week. I don't think we'll have a scenario where everybody turns up into an office on every single day or even one day. Now, if that is what is a hybrid setup, that puts up a huge, uh, I'm not saying question mark, but a huge challenge for leaders here to kind of go ahead and look out and solve for it. Right? And I'm sure they would have been doing it in different shape and form. And we would have to take their views today. But good and bad, right? But what did this digitalized world do for us? One. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for making time for us. So uh, the way I look at it, firstly, uh, I would like to differ on one point. It's my firm belief that uh, there will be a growth in the overall uh, remote work environment, right? Uh, while, yeah, during COVID, we had a knee-jerk effect where we suddenly perforce the uh, one working from home. Of course, that you have seen a strong uh, pushback uh, from the organizations that come back to office. Some down, that again, all are going on. But uh, as a trend, I see a strong resurgence of work from home. Right? Uh, in fact, the people talk of work-life balance, it is actually work-life satisfaction. Right? You can work from home and still not be satisfied when you come into office every day and can still be very satisfied. Right? So, while certain, there will be a flexibility for employees to choose where they want to work from, right? without any particular mandates. As long as the work gets done, well, everybody is happy. The second thing that I see is a strong surge in the area of Automation and AI. Today, yeah, a lot of us, you know, as part of digital transformation, one of the first things people talk about is automation. Let's face it. Now, yeah, it helps us streamline processes. It uh, helps us move from a more people-centric organization to a process-centric organization, per force. But the area where AI, right, or learning will help embellish this is in the area of handling exceptions. Today you might have a lot of processes, but exceptions we handle manually. Right? Handling complexities and more importantly, leveraging of uh, AI in the area of compliance, we see a strong resurgence over there. Now, uh, what does this mean for five years back? What happened? And I was not really sure whether we will be using cloud to that extent. But today, everything is almost on cloud. Your more critical applications on cloud, the regulation is supporting to you know, use cloud to extend. Now the second part which I would say that you know, after COVID, uh, organization has realized that the agility, sustenance, and again the you know, flexibility is very much essential. And with this, I think uh, organization started talking about what we call three R's, risk, revenue, and then the uh, regulations. Along with this, the corporate culture, which is playing a very, very important role. Now when we say risk, I remember when uh, during COVID time, if you ask me, my wife was a CISO because she used to tell me, don't sit here, sit there. <laughs> so that's something which I have seen. So of course, a lot of things are migrating on cloud. So risk is very, very much, you know, is uh, going to be the integral part. And workspace, when, when we talk about workspace, is very much essential that, you know, we need to maintain the basic hygiene. That's something which basically we need to uh, look at. Second is the revenue part, where actually, you know, when we are going to cloud, how much uh, it is going to, you know, hit my pocket. 
that's today is still you know is a question we do not know whether my uh, cloud uh, instance is in the ri which is a reserve instance or it is basically you pay per use kind of a instance and we do not know we cannot have you know that kind of a visibility that you know down the line maybe you know today i am paying on premise maybe uh, 1 lakh tomorrow i will pay 3 lakhs per month that's something which is basically hitting a lot of uh, companies organization so i think cfos are also vigilant and that's something which i think you know is a very important role so i can go to australia i can work are we uh, you know extending people to work from australia outside india how we are going to take care of those risks and regulations and that's something which is really important and to allow this i think cloud is the platform which can make this happen so that's something which we need to you know be very sure that next few things uh, maybe next few years i think you will see a lot of things are adopted on the cloud that will be new things coming up as well but at the same time risk is dynamic we need to also think of you know how we can actually uh, you know uh, make a balance between our adaptation and you know security that's something which i think you know is going to be very crucial crucial in the coming times actually the the point of risk and regulations is quite uh, quite valid and a lot of industries have adopted it very differently let's say like banking have adopted to the regulations which is set by rbi is uh, health industries on those so called ipa guidelines and so on so forth thank you for this question so uh, securing you know uh, digital workspace uh, has been uh, super critical for every organization and uh, also to the it team If you have secured uh, digital workspace, it helps you in many ways. You know, you secure uh, your uh, employee data, your uh, customer data, and your business data, and that also helps you to you know comply with the regulators and uh, you know uh, different different standards. But I mean, every industry has. Yeah. So I I mainly come from pharma industry. So pharma is one of the you know heavily regulated industry. So at every step, you need to face regulators. and while facing those regulators you need to give them a confidence that whatever data you are storing whether you have your uh, clinical research data you have your research and development data your formulations is well protected yeah so that is one part of that the other part is that when you have this works phase how you are securing or you are facilitating your resource your employees to have to have access to your i mean it services in a secure way and again uh, it it roams around you know people process and technology you may have best technology at your organization but if you don't have good people to manage that it it again becomes a super challenging so having a right fitment of people process and technology helps in that way but there are other uh, you know uh, misconception i would say many organizations when i interact with cso and cto or cios they don't have clarity that from where they should start with to securing their digital workspace and as a baseline i would say that you should start with you know a full audit and risk assessment to understand that where your digital strategy stands found that there is a challenge we delivered so many digital initiatives projects in there once people get convinced once they get trained once they get hands on the definitely so that's the big thing i think uh, very rightly said uh, connect uh, uh, connect communicate and collaborate the aspect of collaboration is so important because we at the same time need to get our users enabled with regards to what we are kind of bringing as a change of their life right? um, very valid I think all of us, while on this journey, would have gone through different scenarios of delivering this change in the market, right? Uh, or uh, looking at the change which is coming at us and kind of adapting ourselves and kind of delivering the change to our stakeholders. And Mohan kind of comes in from a very different perspective on this panel, saying that he gets to see a lot of these things which are happening across the industry, right? Uh, so Mohan, my point to you would be: uh, Do you see that change? Uh, which is happening in the way we continue to deliver these applications for our stakeholders, be it internal or external stakeholders, right? And what kind of trends or patterns that you see are emerging now, especially now when we have gone into this world of hybrid? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thanks, Neff, again, for asking us a really good question. And uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, if you look at it, the hybrid is here to stay, uh, and nobody would disagree with me. The proliferation is only going to increase. We may have uh, you know, difference of opinion in terms of the percentage. Uh, so as Nicholas rightly pointed out uh, during his opening remarks later on as well, uh, it is neither going to be completely in office nor it's going to be completely online. Uh, Raj mentioned earlier in his opening uh, remarks as well that while it was forced upon us because of a pandemic and whatever it is, it has given internet advantages to businesses and this is here to stay. Depending on the business scenario, uh, the geography that you're operating in, your, uh, you know, things may change. Now, for this hybrid scenario which is here to stay and something which is going to proliferate further, what is something which is very, very important? We have all seen, even when we're working from our offices, availability of application was important. So here is going to be availability of another dimension, which is availability from anywhere. It's not necessarily availability within the network of the office, but availability from you know, anywhere. Uh, the second important thing aspect which is going to be there is performance from virtually any network, any device, wherever I am from. Uh, good network, low network, uh, any device that I log in from. So that's going to be you know, another important thing. Data security has been important before it's uh, uh, there even today, and with this hybrid and the connected uh, environment, as uh, rightly mentioned, is only going to get more and more focus and attention. And uh, boards have started, uh, you know, realizing the leadership team has started realizing to uh, pay more focus and attention. But this kind of scenario, which is here to stay, and this is the new normal, as you know, we can think of going forward. Now, what is going to be the key differentiator? It's like when you're driving a car, you require roads, you require... Tonage or a tablet and form factors have changed, they will continue to evolve, right? So our application, while the application delivery mechanisms are changing, our user experience is also evolving. I'm, I'm making this open for our panel to comment on it in terms of the way you see the whole user experience in this world to change or adapt. Your views. Financial inclusion, what is happening is if you talk, that's a one typical example is your UPI or Paytm, that is a pure place example. Anywhere, anything, you can access your know, devices, different devices, the small mobile phone printer or it is a smart, it's all accessible, right? So, the point is very simple is, uh, it should be like, you know, users are expecting like anywhere, any device, like, you know, any place they can access seamlessly. This should not have like, you know, a lot of uh, the way a friend said MFA, of course MFA or biometrics or facial or face detection, those kind of technology or passport less kind of thing. This is giving more accessibility and again the way I said that IEEE is most important is it like you know identification. Then you have accounting authorization and authentication. Those mechanism, mechanisms should be very clear and seamless so that we can access to anything like you know, anywhere, any device. That is what the user experience. percent I know there's bell ringing out there and it's an indication for us to go, but I'll still take a minute or two for our panel uh, members to comment on it because this is one last question and I think uh, rightly so because any amount of innovation that you can... Mr. Raj Gopal Nayak from Metro Brands Limited. Mr. Birendra Mishra from Alcom Laboratories Limited. <laughs> Mr. Pratikta Patro from RPG Group. <laughs> Mr. Harshad Mengle from Aditya Birla Group. Mr. Mohar V from TechWid Consulting India Private Limited.